both sort of, you know, side read, uh, where I go, which you were just doing, and um, people the same. And then I'll figure it out from there. All right. Taking a second step, you don't need to take. So just go right into it. As you counter punch, make sure your foot's close enough. Get in there right away. There. Now turn. Yeah, way better. Now stay balanced and give us a nice kick. Oh, you can't do anything now. I have to hold my nose. Okay. So is this Hoshin or is it done over here? This, he's doing Hoshin requirements. It you looks like it on Ruby because it's doing it without any of this other stuff. Well, I can't really bother him with a chair, so. Some people would walk around. Some people would. No problem. There. Oh, I know. Much better. Much better. Did it feel right to you, Mike? I think so. Yeah. yeah. You should be taking you out right up at the hip. So, Armando, keep your leg on the outside of his leg, but chamber your, your foot real high so that when you kick, it's actually your thigh taking out his thigh with the back kick. Okay, give him another shot. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. Your upper body and lower body all did the throw at the same time. It was very nice. Before you do your back kick, make sure you're in a good position. That's better. Better. <laughs> ah, uh, missed it. Land on your head? Huh? Just land on your head? No, I need it. Oh. <laughs> it's okay, you are using it. I want to take that extra step to get closer. <coughs> Notice that. It looks like something I've let you do it before you've developed a habit. So we'll have to not let that happen anymore. Well, you want to go right into where you're going to throw because his punch starts the whole thing, right? He starts the off balancing himself. So as he starts to punch, you just fit right into that circle that he creates with his punch to do your throw. 
If you're too far away and you block, then you've stopped the technique and you're resetting by getting into center. So he has the chance to be recentered too. You have to do it all at the same time. Well, and if his punch doesn't bring me close enough to do a technique, uh, do I have to move myself in? Yeah, and you can do that with using your striking. Especially in Hoshin, I would say use your striking to keep him off balance while you do that. So let's try that. Let's say that um, Armando doesn't step in close enough. Give us so we can watch it. Do a right punch. So Armando's not close enough. Now what are you going to do to get in closer and keep him off balance while you do it? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yep. 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 Exactly. So he punches. I'm like, oh man, I'm too far away really to get a good throw. Well, that's okay. I can keep striking. Work my way in. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and if you pick those strategic places, it makes him kind of go like this until you're in position for the throw. Keeps him off balance. The other part of it was is that he was way off balance. When he did go ahead and step into it again, keep a little, you know, too far, right there, look how far off balance he is. Right, because you're not close enough with your legs, your shoulders have to lean in. You're, you're tipped way over. Uh, you got ears way over, shoulders are way out of line with your hips, and if you were lucky enough to actually hit the guy, it's like, my sister hits harder, you know? <laughs> because you're not in line, you don't have posture, you don't have your center, you're not moving from center, you're falling out of center. When you move from that point, then you're going to have to either move and correct so you can get the throw if you do one, um, which means you've got to really make some corrections. But if you don't know that you're making that mistake, um, turn that way a little bit, do the very same thing and put it on camera, and then when I edit the video, I can point out what you're doing, you can see what you're doing. Um, yeah. Go ahead and do it for the camera, don't worry about me. Just step in like you just did, and okay, now go ahead and finish your technique and whatever, but I'll be able to show on the video then how you were so tipped over. Unless you want to demonstrate to them how far, I mean, you, can, you can't see yourself when you're doing it. Well, but you can, I, I can see it. Tell when I'm there. Oh, there you go, good idea. So, okay, stay that half step away again so that you can't quite get in. There you go. Okay, you're Can starting you to fix it. About? Over time, you're starting to fix it. When he's moving over, but you should be he's a line up yeah. here, he's here, here. here. So that you're and and you see that a lot yeah. when you see watch now? videos on sure now. YouTube so and all the martial arts things. You want Matt they're stepping in to do a throw and they're tipped over like this. Balance. We want that. And they shouldn't be. They should be dropped straight down. If he's back here, he's balanced. If he's there, he's off balance. But we want you to Straight down, and the only time you bend is at the end when you bow to do the throw. Can I can I pull to get him on back? Yes. Yes. The other alternative, instead of you coming to him, is bringing him to you. Kind of like Yeah, do that. And well, that's where this hand would come in. When you, when you step in and lock, you're here, you're still facing. You don't even turn, at least in DDR, you don't even turn until you're striking. And I don't reach to strike, I bring this here, which makes them come to me, wham, you get a solid punch out of that. Because they're coming at me and I'm turning and putting all that power right into them. Then I move one foot, pivot the other, and I'm in position to throw. You don't turn until you throw a punch, is that correct? Pardon? You're mm -hmm. not turning until you throw a punch? The punch comes from the turn, the movement. I'm not, I'm not going to step in here like that. I'm going to step in here, turn, and then strike when I turn. And I usually do a vertical fist because that just helps with the power of this. And this should be exactly what he's learning. We do, okay. the, we do the same drill. We do the one, two, three. Seven. Okay. Now this foot's pretty close to where I want it to be. So all I really have to do then is reach in here or up here, whatever, pivot, and I'm in position for the throw with only moving one foot. I missed that. How'd you get so close? How'd you close that gap? I stepped in. He moved. I judged my step based on his. When I turn my body and I'm in the kibidachi or whatever, straddle stance, I'm here. I'm already... I moved the target. I already have a step. If I'm, if I step All I'm stepping to do is turn my body. I turn, I move the target. He goes past the target and he's right in line. Good breathing. He's right in line to get hit. And because I'm moving correctly, I'm getting that power behind the punch. 
if I just stood here and went boom, I mean, it probably could hurt, but <laughs> it's not the same thing as stepping in and using my whole body. Because I'm not going to stop there, I'm going to keep turning and do my throw, whichever one I want. So, going back to the beginning, Armando, you know you have this drill. One, two, three. But when you're doing the throw, you're doing one, two, three. You're moving your foot forward. And it's only because you're not judging that distance in the beginning. If, if the break punch comes, and I've only gotten this far, I can't do that throw. I can change throws, right? Yeah. But I can't do that inside, that hip-style throw. So, you what I need do to do... Strike. And the punch, but yeah. you got to do a different throw. You can even include a kick. And you can move into position like we just talked about as you strike. But if you're going to match up with his punch, you have to get right inside at the beginning so you're already in the right position. Whoa. And that's just a matter of <laughs> you know, if you If you end up, go ahead and just step out and punch. If you end up here, because he's really wild with a punch, okay, you're still here. That doesn't mean you can't throw. You just have to do it different way. So the guy comes to mine or, or whatever, you know. So um, if you're practicing just to get to the inside, okay, then we'll go one, two, three, and do the throw. But if you're practicing a little more reality, you may end up out here. You may end up anywhere because not everybody punches straight at you. Sometimes they. They come around. Sometimes they do things you're not quite ready for. But it doesn't matter. You just step in the same way, move straight in, and when you've blocked, provide your strike or punch, and then take what you got. <laughs> so there you go. So um, just stay balanced is all we're trying to That's say. the big thing. Yeah. Always move from your center. And when you are blocking, Make sure your block turns him. Because when you turn him, you take him out of balance. If, if go ahead and come back and punch. Right here. If I stay on the inside, I'd guide his punch past the target, which is my face. I want it to go there so that I can keep him out of balance. See how far he is out of balance? Every block, every move you do should cause the person to be out of balance. If, if I just did this, don't step, just punch. Okay, I blocked, but I didn't do anything. I didn't get hit. But he's still got balance, which isn't good. It's not good. I don't want him to have his balance. I want him to be in trouble. I can stand all day blocking what he's doing, but if I'm not doing anything that takes him out of center, then I have no control over it. Because you can't keep somebody from throwing a punch at you. Or kicking, all you can do is respond to it, but you want to respond in a way that makes it difficult or impossible for them to do another kick or punch or strike. And that's the purpose of, of maintaining your center and make sure that what you do causes that other person to go out of balance. Because sometimes that's the only move you got. You block so hard and take them out of balance and they start stumbling around. You may not have had a chance to do anything else about that, but that's okay because they're out of balance. Just you know, close in on them and keep them going. So, okay, go ahead and play. Do that, whatever. I'm, but I'm not even sure what we're doing. I just threw out my five cents worth there. I say you can have this person. I say I'm on to switch to um, Tayatosh because it's the same idea. You still need to get the right spacing for the throw. So let's do Tayatosh. And if you need any refreshers, Matt can help you. He's pretty good. But how do I practice judging distance? What, where does that come from? More time on the mat, just making sure you, you can read the person's body movement. If you want, you just do a lot of it. Mm -hmm. That's like Cross anything you learn, you practice over and over and over until it becomes part of it. So you kind of got to judge where you can find it. You just have to see where they're going to land and just get right in. Taitosh. 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 I always start in the stance. Should, should I be starting something else? No, or I... you can start that way. But make sure you that if you're gonna if you're gonna start in this stance already forward, you should 
permanently push step drag or replacement or whatever it takes to do your techniques to get in the right position. Because if I was here, I would be able to do Go everything ahead. in one one movement. Start there. That's fine. Just do what's comfortable to you. You know, I like to whenever, and I've not not been in that many confrontations, but only enough to to. Uh, Thanks, brother. My twin yeah. brother would get into fights and not tell me, and then they'd see me the next day and think I'd hand <laughs> And so then there'd be something to deal with. But I always stood there just, just facing them like, what, who? I, I, you know, uh, I was a geeky little kid anyway, so nobody ever expected me to be able to do anything. And uh, so I just stood there like Joe Cool, straight at him, like I'm dumb and don't know I should turn and, and act like I know something. But uh, that worked my favor because uh, I could move and I did know something and they didn't think I did that's why they picked on me because I was you know so practice what works for you if you think you need to be in a particular stance then go ahead and use it but if it becomes a restriction to you then quit doing it if it limits you from being able to do something else then stand there like Mac is doing just just stand there Straight at him. Look him square in the eye and don't give him a chance, you know, let him see the attitude. <laughs> the calm before the storm. <laughs> Alright, time push. There you go. Your position. <laughs> Good. Now I don't want you to go to a knee. You guys have it your form, so don't do that. Just do the tiny toes and stand there. That's better. A little more pop in that straight leg and you'll have a better throw. Now, a little more twisting of his arm will give you better off balancing on top half of the technique. Yeah. Mac, what do you think so far? Um, well, he's in really deep okay. um, when he first starts, so I'm not sure if he's if he's really snapping the Patitosh or if he's kind of sweeping it. Oh, I didn't see him sweep, and I don't think there's too much hip, so I feel pretty good about that. Yeah, yeah you don't use hip to tie a toes. No. I think he's doing okay that way. Okay. It looked right. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell when he was that deep. So. Let's do left side. That felt really good being that close. Mm-hmm. You'll find that close is comfortable, <laughs> especially in jiu-jitsu. Hoshin is basically, what you're studying now is basically jiu-jitsu, and when you're in close, you feel good about it. So. You have to start here and finish here, but that's not the case. Um, as Max steps forward with his left, he steps really circular, like really far around. And when you step in, you're actually blocking clear over here, which means your throw is going to be over there. But you're stepping in front of him to throw him there, and that's throwing the whole thing off. So I want you to think about throwing him on this angle instead. Okay. From this side? Yeah. That doesn't even make sense to me. It, it will when you do it. <laughs> Get in there with your lead foot. You see where I am? I didn't even stop. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. This is the angle we're looking for. <laughs> yeah. And the reason is because that's the angle he's facing. That's right. When he steps right. out, his whole body is turned this way. He's not facing that way, he's facing this way. So you gotta get in front of him. The only way to be in front and be in alignment with him is to face the same way he is. I bet you went back to changing the angle a little bit. And what happens is you get too much of his leg, not enough of his hip when you do that. So you gotta keep turning. There you go. Nice. There's, are you using all three variations? No, he's not yet. No. Well, I don't mean the second, but do you get there? Yeah, eventually. Mitch and I have been working on that for Hoshin. Uh, I, think I, I don't know if I sent you the video or just told you about it, but we're working, Mitch and I are working the eight angles and moving 
one step, two step, three step. So one, wait, how does this go? <laughs> I can't remember. One, two, maybe it's only two and one and then the quick turn. So we are, we're working from what he's learning into the two and three, or the one and two, I mean, but not at Armando's level. Um, basically, Mitch was saying that when he's in his judo school, when he's in his judo school, and he, um, this person advances, he feels like it's taking him too long to get into his throwing position. And that's what prompted us to start doing, if you push with your right side, to doing yeah. it one step. And it doesn't have to be tied to Hoshin. All the throws can be done that way. Yeah. And that's where we are with it now for Hoshin, but that's really not what Armando's working on yet. Okay. So like, whatever angle he, he pushes at, he pushes with the other one. <laughs> Same thing. Well, my thinking was that right now, doing what he's doing, he needs to learn how to be in front of the attacker Right. Whether he's doing it uh, at the third level or the first or even second level, um, because eventually he'll get into the third level with one of the styles. Right. And if he's been doing it the other way and doing it wrong, right, by trying to take them that way when they're supposed to be going that way or something, then that's going to be a real problem. Yeah. So just, that's why I'm saying. That. I agree. I think what we got for you right now, Armando, is you got to get the center of the body and judge the distance how deep you need to be into the body. That's where we are. If he's facing a particular direction with his shoulders and hips, then that's the direction you have to be facing, whatever throw you're doing. And Armando might have missed that lesson, but come on up here, and we'll show Armando specifically. When, uh, and you might have never seen this, Phil. You're fairly new. When you throw somebody, we'll show the camera too. When you throw somebody, you throw them on their center line. This is where you're throwing them from, OK? Your body's divided down the center line on these planes, and the knees make one plane, the hips make the other, and the shoulders make the third. So this is where you throw a person on this, and Soka Coverstone talks about that a lot, the ranges of the person. Yeah. But you always throw on the center of the person. It can be on the back, on the spine as well, but it's always from the center. We don't throw them on their sides. So if I'm setting up for a hip throw, and I'm clear over here, I'm not going to get a decent hip throw. I need to be on the center of his body. If I set up for... Uh, like you were just doing, getting the right foot forward. Set up for a Tayatosh and you're throwing him this way. You're not going to get Tayatosh because you're not throwing him over the center of the body. You need to throw him over his center, even though you're taking one leg out. So the throws always have to be on the center. When you match up for something like a Hanagosh, you have to be matched up on the center of the body. When you do your Osoto, you're buckling the center of the body, even though you're only taking one leg. The tip and turn is on this plane and this plane, shoulder and hip, but you're actually affecting the center line of the body. So always, always, always throw on the center of the body and manipulate the tip and turn of the hips and shoulders as you do it. That ought to make some sense, because if you're, if you're trying to do any sort of throw, let's say I'm doing a shoulder throw, but I'm doing it over this thigh, I'm not going to get the, the throw. In fact, if he just bends his knees, bend your knees, I'm off balance. You should have showed that to him. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I need to be throwing over the center. The knot of the belt is the one point for the person wearing the belt. That's where you're throwing from almost all the time. It's right there on that one point. And that's like, such a simple thing. It really is because I watch videos on, on YouTube with some of the judo people. Well, judo is a sloppy, bad thing to even watch. Don't watch it because most of what they do is junk. But watch some of the other jiu-jitsu styles and stuff and look at the throws they do and see how twisted and out of balance the person doing the throw is. Because whenever you see us doing a throw, you see that we're balanced. We're in center. And we've got their center, which is their belt, right where it's supposed to be. So we're not using strength. It's our movement that creates the proper technique, just like with kicking or 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 anything. That's why movement has become so important with what I'm teaching. We're going to go through some more of that when, when he's gone. But <laughs> yeah. We won't put that part on video. <laughs> Once we've off, need that. But, but <laughs> movement, being able to maintain your center is what allows you to do whatever technique that it is that you're trying to execute against the person that's attacking you. And all, all you can control is your center. And if you've got your center right, you're going to have control of their center. 
if you don't have their center, just like when you step in to do a shoulder throw and you were on the side of the person instead of in front of them, you were out of balance. Mm -hmm. And it was easy to take your balance out completely if a person understood how to do that, which now you do. So just, just erase that, right? <laughs> yeah. no, that's, that. that's a clear example of, <laughs> of what, how easy it is to take a person out of balance. If you're out of balance, they're in balance. And you better know when you're out of balance so you can work and correct your mistakes so that you never make those kind of mistakes. You know, don't do a technique if you can't do it correctly because you're only going to give them an opportunity to take advantage. They'll win. Huh? It's just around the corner. <laughs> you held your hand up. You had your hand up. Oh, I was just thinking about that. I, I think I answered it myself, actually. <laughs> well, then, since you have a knife... Yeah. I'm just thinking. <laughs> no, I had a question, and then I was thinking about it as you were talking. I that. do a lot of thinking myself. Let's have Phil attack you with a knife. Oh boy. Um, I want you to go real slow and easy and just do good technique. Do all your basic don't under stuff that you know, but do it in such a way you're not going to get cut. And then whatever Soka says to fix, fix it. Cool. So just go out of any way? Yeah. <laughs> Um, how many ways to use that knife? What are the different uh, cuts that you have? Have you learned specific cuts with it? Or? I have not. This is the first time you've probably learned. Okay. Can you show him different ways to use it? That way he can attack you with something other than a forward lunge. Yeah, you can go forward lunge. Right. You can go all the eight directions. I used to know these about slashing. Any other? so much what technique you did, but how you ended up and how that knife is. Generally, you have had that knife turned so that the back of the blade is actually what's against your body. Right. And that's cool because you've ended up that way most of the time. Rather than the blade here where it could cut you, it's been the back of the blade. Right. And so you, you've actually blocked it 
and the back of the blade is there, so it's not going to cause any damage as you follow through and do whatever technique you're doing. I've been watching to see if that's happening, okay. which it has been, because that's that's almost more important than than whether you throw them or not. Because if you're still getting cut real bad, he could sever a nerve or an artery or whatever, and you may throw him, but you know you're bleeding to death. So, so the blocking you're doing is effective. Uh, say uncle. Uncle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Got my nose. That would have been good. Oh, right across the face. As soon as you hit it, I let go. So I got to hold on. There we go. Who did you decide to trip him? I don't know. <laughs> I just <laughs> okay. It's like I think I can save balance if I trip him, but if I try to, you want me to try to stay away from that? Just quick jabs. See if he can. What is the time? To be. No, he didn't pull it back. Now a thrust. A jab. Just back. Okay. Plan. Slash. Slash. Quick slash. Quick movement. See how he, he takes control of it. He's got the knife, so you go behind him <laughs> and come behind, knife his rope. He's got the knife. <laughs> I've got to come in. Wait a minute. You don't know. Are you just standing there talking to your girlfriend? All right. Yeah, no, no, no. He's and, just going to come up to you. And he's going to come up behind and get an arm around your throat with a knife at your throat. <clears throat> then you're going to think, oh, shit. I mean, <laughs> right. You're going to think something. I don't know if that will be it, but come in around just knife at the throat. There, now you're allowed to defend yourself. You got it. Now, what are you going to do? Okay, do the same thing, only face that way. Turn around, and he'll be there. That way we can see it. Right. Knife on throw. There you go. Oh. You can use both hands if you want. Get in there and hold him. Now, what is your thinking? My thinking is try to get this without him slicing that way. Um, and going just quick enough. I, because I want to make sure I get the... I get the grip. I don't want to go in and he goes in. I want to make sure I I get a good grip. Because I can't just kick this way because this is going to push him, in, push him in, into my neck. Like You've got two hands too, by the way. I do. First I'd try to get a hold of the knife. Make it try to go that way and hold it. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> so I kind of have it on him. This actually happened to me. I had that uh, happen. Okay. Um, did, did you jump your gun? Then, because what you I did to save my life, I guess, broke the guy's arm, but saved my life. Um, I was hitchhiking, my truck broke down, this was 100 years ago. 
and I was just kind of thumbing the ride to get to my house so I could grab whatever I need and go back because I didn't have what I needed to fix the tire <laughs> or whatever it was, I don't remember. Um, go ahead. You're right. So the knife is here, and this was the guy that was in the back seat behind me, and I didn't look before I got in the car. And this arm came up, and there was a knife, and it came around this way, and I immediately just shoved the shoulder that way and took it out like this and broke it right over the seat. And uh, that's what I had. You know, I couldn't reach him any beyond that because he was, there was a seat between us. Yeah. But I had the arm, and the knife was falling, and the guy in the driver's seat was trying to get to the knife and couldn't, yeah. you know, and so, but as soon as you see something coming around like that, just turn your head and push that elbow, push that elbow right up here, they can't collapse that quick enough to get to you, and then immediately pull down as your other hand is coming up. Okay. That works? Yep. Yeah. Okay. had that you had control of the weapon right that's a, what you do after that is you know it's up to you but you control the weapon first and that's the only thing that I care about okay but if you do a technique after that that's okay too. I like what I just did okay. Okay. Yes, I 
let him do the FFA again. Every time. Uh, uh, Twenty yeah. couple times you can. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Stop. You're just holding this. You need to. Yeah. I'll count him there. And that will help wrap him around. Yeah, you can't muscle him. It's really hard to just muscle him over at this point. You really just need to use that whole circle. And it's a lot easier. Just one from the other. Okay. Well, a couple times he didn't have his hip. Then he got his hip in place and he's able to do the throw. And then this last one, he got his hip in place. He was low enough. Your belt should be below their belt. That's how you know if you're bending your knees enough. That's general rule. All right. Where he's facing when he when he steps out, he's facing over that way, and you're still facing that way. So I'm gonna come up this way. it all the way around, yeah. Let's 
thing here from the right right. So you just put the pivot foot from in and block. Straight. And then just really turn it into it. Because right now he's not going a straight. He's kind of he has his uh, strike. He's kind of facing it. this way. So we're gonna be like, all right. I think so. I think it's because he's not completing the whole circle of the throw. So you get off of his hip and then crash to the floor. We need Phil to get the hole off balance, in, which in part is because he can't spring from the knee because his feet are in the wrong spot. So his hip can't pop you up in the air. So your hips are only going up so high and then you're crashing instead of your hips coming all the way over your shoulder. It's not a good thing? It's not a good thing. Well, first of all, your training partners can't survive for very long. <laughs> <laughs> um, and second, it goes, to, it feeds into the rest of your technique. It's not, it's not like if I make this guy hurt, I've done it right. That's not really the goal. The goal is to get your movement right, so it translates into all of your technique all the time, even your defensive technique. Learning how to off balance somebody in this throw also teaches you how to take the throw, right? As the yuki, also teaches you the proper way to do any of your break falls or rolls. Your break falls and your rolls help you as an yuki. And your throwing technique helps you as a Tori, but everything you learn as a Tori helps you become a better Uki, and everything you learn as an Uki helps you become a better Tori. So each technique is not about how much pain did I put the guy in, it's about perfecting your movement so that in the end, you don't make as many mistakes, no matter what it is. You learn from your throw how to do a better roll, for example. Which is why when you say what I do wrong, and they say, well, throw me, not me to see. Mm -hmm. Because when you, when you understand both sides of the technique, being thrown is the easiest way to figure out what, what they're doing wrong. It's easier. Okay, now I know what you're doing wrong because I can feel what you're doing wrong. You'll get there. It'll happen and then all of a sudden you realize you know more when somebody throws you than, than when you watch them. So what was Phil supposed to do to correct that? He's been working on it. He's, he knows he's got to keep his heels together and not step apart. He already mentioned that himself, right Phil? Mm -hmm. And uh, staying below the nose belt, like Soka said, and the below the other person's belt when you throw. Those are the things he needs to do to get that off balance. And you're getting there. Just remember, throw on that center line and keep your belt below theirs. Keep your heels together, and you'll be fine. It makes me question how I've been throwing. You know, like my throwing my yuki's hard or anything like that. Like do my yuki's line hard. You're the yuki today. Yeah. Sometimes, but it's good. I mean, you're just making a a a, a really good circle. You really move. Okay. You really move in a circle. You don't chop it up very often. And the only thing that Armando does that makes the landing hard is he also bends his knees at the end of the technique. It's almost Maki Komi. He, he does this, which is good for second degree black belt in DDR, because <laughs> that's what we're going for. That kind of thing, yeah. And that makes the landing very rough. It doesn't mean your technique is wrong. It's just you're adding this extra weight underside at the end of it. It's really not inherent in the technique. It drags them through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> right. So no, I don't think that's the issue. You and Phil have two different issues right now. Phil's trying to figure out how to spring enough to get the hips over the shoulders and keep all the off-balancing coordinated. And you're trying to space and get the right position on the person when they attack. Big things happen there. See all that? You shuffle step backwards through the technique and he ended up landing sideways. Those are two indicators of the same problem. You know what that problem was? 
you weren't centered in your technique. You didn't start centered, so you couldn't finish centered. True. Where the person lands indicates what you did right or wrong. They should always land in front of you. Feet that way, not this way. If, if you're if they land and they're they're this way, you did it wrong. Just say oops and then fix it. Make sure that they're always landing with their feet going away from you. That's that's when you know you did the throw, whatever it is, you did it correctly. And the only way you can do it correctly is to be on center. So <laughs> now there is one exception to that rule. When you get an ookie who's afraid of falling, and they grab onto you while you're throwing them, they wrap around you like a rubber band, because they're afraid to fall. And they're doing everything they can to keep you from throwing them. Where if they just learned how to fall, they would realize that it's a whole lot easier just to be thrown and fall right than it is to fight every throw that's being done, because they can mess up your technique. You may have done it right until they latch onto you halfway through it and, and fall wrong, because they're afraid of it. And then they end up landing on a shoulder, or they oh, land yeah. on their head. They get hurt. They end up getting hurt worse. And they blame you because <laughs> their fear is keeping them from just relax and fall. So that happens. And you'll know when that happens because they're going to be dragging you down every time you throw them. They're going to be hanging on to you for dear life, and you can't get over. You can't throw them away from you because they're wrapped around you. Then you know that they've got a falling problem. That's when you back up and say, "Okay, we need to practice some rolls and stuff." And you take them back to page one and start going through the falls until they can finally get to where they can roll and fall without being afraid of it. Because until they are, you're going to have the same high risk of getting hurt as they are. Because they're going to drag you down every time. And so and you don't want to get hurt because of their sloppiness and you don't want to get, you know, injured. Uh, you don't want them to be injured either. So for their safety, you've got to make them go back and learn how to fall again. No, um, more. It's more important for me that Soka sees your Dodonru, and the requirements are right here. If you need to look at them, we can find them for you now. Karate Jitsu, Shikoku Kikyo, Ah, Dodonru. Um, so if you want Soka to assess basically how you're doing toward your belt level, if you can be promoted today, or if he needs to come back to promote you, or if he's okay with Dan promoting you, or what. We talked about it just briefly a second ago. I don't need to be a part of that other than so if you can tell me what to work on with you. you know. um, so no, I have to leave in five minutes. Let me give you this, which we did not give you in front of 185 people the other night. Uh, thank you very much. There were a ton of people there, so okay, this gymnasium was so filled. It was wow. filled. It was filled. Phil got a special award. What did you get? Uh, student of the quarter. Student of the quarter, yeah. That's right. So there you go. This is a great one. I found all these great stamps. Since you tested in Jishinru, I was able to use all my fancy stamps. This one says Karate Jitsu, and this one says Jishinru. Taiki Budokai, and then my initials in English. And then over there is Taiki Budokai. So sweet. Yeah. All right, so congrats on your 32. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I'll get going. Have a fun trip. Yeah, Is this thanks. a family thing? Or? No, it's the exchange. Well, we're picking up Jacob, but then it's the exchange program with the high school students. It's uh, okay. overnight in line. We do it once a year. Yeah. Dan, so good idea. Dan usually helps us with it, but this year I forgot to even tell him it was coming up. He helped the last two years, though. Thank you, Armando. Learn something today, will you? Thank you. <laughs> So you have to key to lock the gate? I'm going to give one here, um, Mac, where do you want it so you know how to find it? Um, I just want to get around the back. Yeah. Better be. <laughs> That's a good idea. It's OK. I want to work on my throws. Good pet throws? Here, throw them. Um, Jiu Jitsu? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Armando, you only have a few minutes, too, don't you? Yeah. We better cram Armando in here, give him as much time as possible. 
So, okay, you can critique him as though it's Dota Unreal. It's really not any different. He just does a whole bunch of, like, knee and elbow and punches and stuff like that in there. Yeah, it's, okay. So that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Got to do them, right? Mm -hmm. Drop this off uh, back at the house, or do I want one? I want to practice any form from this stance. I'm going to be able to post this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 I really want to practice closing this distance. Pardon? I really want to practice closing this distance with the push stuff. If you need to close in, I'll let you go. How's it land? I'm good. I'm laying on my side. Which one are you doing? That's Just the guys. What's my phone for? Just because I wanted to give it both to you and sitting over there together. Yeah. I didn't bring you your glasses though. They're okay. That's okay. I don't need them. I kind of know what you're doing. I've seen it before. Where's yeah. the power? Where's the power in your first punch? Okay. So you're getting a vertical fist punch from a shuffle in. Does that work, Mac? Um, he's kind of making it work. Um, well, I thought we were talking about earlier though. He's not this. Uh, he's not this. But are you taught doing that with the shuffle in, or are you taught to do it to turn the body? Is that I've seen people do strikes when they just shuffle sideways and do a strike or a punch. And then, of course, in jiu-jitsu, we do it this way. But if you're being taught to do a side shuffle with your strike, that's okay. I just want to know if you understand where the power comes from. I'm not to training that effective. Uh, can you hit somebody hard enough to do anything by doing that? I, I could, but I don't want to. At least not in this setting. What you practice is what you'll end up doing for real. So go ahead and hit them, they don't care. Okay. That's why they learned to breathe on impact, right? That's what he was doing when I hit him. Every time, I thought, cool. <laughs> <laughs> have that enough that of a strike so that you know you have something. Um, don't you, is that what he's learning when he, he's doing a side shuffle with a vertical fist? Is that correct, or is he supposed to be stepping and then turning? We, I yeah, which it is. He he does like I was saying. He does that DDR drill. So he should be doing the turning. He should be. So that's yeah. because that's not what he's. He's already at an angle to him, and then he just shuffles in and hits him. Right, and that's okay too because Hoshin does this the push step yeah. drag drill. That's what I say. I was just asking him if he where's the power come from your your punch. Right. Or strike. And, and, and I just. You know, if it fits into the throw, that's fine because that's part of his Hoshin training is to be able to do that lead jab with your push. But the power, of course, has to come from here. Okay. So his so, movement. Of course, the difference between a strike and a punch is the turn right. and the amount of power that's in it. Because a strike could be just a slap of the face or whatever. Uh, if I can use filler real quick. Basically, what. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're attacking at all. Basically, he's getting this off balancing with this okay. movement. But if he's pushing that way and then trying to pull this way for the throw, it's probably counterproductive. Well, he's doing a right hand here. He's just striking right here. Okay, that's good. And then doing whatever after that. Yeah. Okay. So either well, of those is correct to be able to do a side shuffle with a strike or whatever. I just yeah. want to be sure he understood the difference between that and a punch. Yes, yeah, so you can explain that and talk about that as much as you want. It won't. It won't interfere with his training in any. Okay, cool. Because they've got every way you can possibly move. They, they have the hip closing down, they have the push step, they have the replacement step, the, the cross step. So you know what I mean? All of it is cool. good. It won't hurt him. Whatever you teach him won't hurt him. <laughs> if I really want to, this would be power. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I wouldn't be able to throw with that. Right. So, so, so we have to start like, um, more like that. 
for uh, for um, a lead punch. I need to tap in for an But with my jab, but with this, with the jab I, I practice. Hmm? With the jab I practice. Yeah, you turn the Some of the NTSR uh, style that you don't. I'm looking at. That's what this one does. There's no turning on the head. Mm -hmm. the, using that. The motion I practice. Well, how are you doing? Or when they're saying, the man, I hope this is better than last head. year. Mm -hmm. If they use present tense language to make that same statement, then what they're doing so is attracting, if you like that movie, it's all Secret, it's yeah. and a bunch of other others, with the belief and all those other yeah, yeah, yeah. physics things that they've done next time. Using present tense. As if it's, already it's just happened. quick, you know. It yeah. may not be a true statement. I don't want to really turn it unless I'm going to go to right. tense. So with this yeah. jab, I, so I don't want to turn it unless I could do with the throw. Yeah. If we attract it, if you want from the universe, oh. God, they call it whatever, who cares? And you really you attract what you yes. make a present tense right now in the moment of playing a thing. And so learning to say like things that way. Try it with just a when you refer to your own life. Or, or whatever, <coughs> you know, mm -hmm. it brings all those um, things about. And I got some good it, examples go of all the different things that have happened since I changed. I always have what I need. Right. I I've said that for years. I always have what I need when I need it. And I've changed it, change it though, to make sure, um, you know, I'm thankful and grateful for the abundance that I have. And the things that have changed because of that here, and they're getting so close to that part where it's almost. I think for the sake of the drill, mm -hmm. but I talk about it new. as if it's really yeah. happened. Right. And and so that changes me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Changes you know, if look. I'm having a bad day and I say, yeah. Yeah. One more person runs out in front of me, I'm just going to hit him. Well, you're going to have that opportunity. Yeah, all yeah, right. You know, yeah. Just bring it on, baby. <laughs> yeah. Say, <laughs> bring it on. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. I know that um, Armando has to leave soon to get ready for work, so he wants to get out of his stuff. I know these two guys want to make sure that you see what they're doing and doing on the road, and that's that principle stuff is good okay. for all of them. So, we'll get through. Yeah. Good deal. I'm sorry I can't stand well, that's okay. Two step there. Yeah. Where did I leave my shoes, Soka? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's a little piece from a game. Oh, okay. I saw I that last night. I thought I was practicing that. Yeah. That's right. Getting in close. Yeah. I'll give me the context. As you do that, make sure you're not leaning sideways in that strike. Keep centered Which between way? your feet. Because what you were doing earlier, you were tipping like that. You were reaching with your strike, and if you're not close enough to actually hit him, then you know you need to shuffle a little bit farther and get close enough so you've got your center because that's when you're going to have the power you need to do whatever throw you're doing. I don't think you're doing this so much. I think you're doing this. Like you're just doing it this way. Like you're still keeping, keeping your back straight because you're used to doing that. But you're doing this. You're just going like, like, I'm and the other. Up, but yeah, there you go. I'm still waiting. Yeah. The, the other part of that is. is uh, I should be going. I, I start to, everybody's got their input. But anyway, thank you guys. You're the future of the Taiki Budokai. Keep it up. Good yeah, job. That's right. You know, <laughs> another 50 years when I'm gone, you're going <laughs> to. Maybe 50. I got stuff planned until like 93, so there you go. Oh, my God. I'm yeah, sure that I'll be years, so. in, in uh, contact with you guys, text messages and stuff. But have a good day. Mac, maybe make sure that's at 55. You don't have to turn yeah. the heat off. We don't turn it off, but just drop it down to 55. I remember. All right, cool, man. Thanks, guys. See ya. Be careful. Have fun. My dad says 50 is middle age. My dad says 50 is middle age. Is it? That's what he says. I've slid right past that one. <laughs> I'm 63 now. I'll be 64 this year. Wow. 64. That's the beginning of my 50th year in the martial arts. 50th year? 50 years. Oh, wow. I'm turning 24. Yeah. Next month. I had 10 years in by then. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll have. In March, it'll be two full years. Is that all? Yeah. Seems like you've been here a lot longer than that. It's crazy. I feel like it's been like three or four, but. Wow. It just seems like it's been a lot longer than that. I know. Wow. I know. Cool. Very good. Um. So as, as you step in with your shuffles, forward step, whatever you're doing, make sure it actually allows you to be close enough to get the strike that you want.
Now, remember what we taught, and this has been a while ago. Elbows past knees. If you're doing a strike from the side and it's a side shuffle and you reach out with your arm to do a strike and that elbow gets past your knee, what does that mean? Off balance. Yeah, you're off balance. And here's what happens. Um, if you're standing this way to the attacker anyway and then you side shuffle and you reach like this to punch because you didn't get quite close enough, elbows past knees means I have no power. If I do this, look what happens to this. Right here. Just just that simple move, and I'm out of balance, and when I actually hit the person, it's like, that didn't hurt. And so you, you have no balance. <coughs> if you're doing like a DDR and we turn, our strike is never any farther away than the elbow just to the end of the hand because our body is in there. It means I don't have to tip my body to reach. So if you do a shuffle, Make sure that when you do that shuffle, you've got a wide stance with your kibidachi, your straddle stance, and you're not going to reach any farther than your elbow would be to be above your knee. Because if you do any farther than that, you're not going to have the balance. You're not going to be in position to do your throw. The moves we do need to make that person go out of balance, not us. And so if I get a chance on this video, it depends on how much I keep. I, I've gotten to where I don't post a four-hour video anymore on Facebook or YouTube. <laughs> You still have the other video from the first time? Yeah, they're all on YouTube. I got 140 videos on YouTube. If you know where to find them. I know where to find the one. It's in my email. <laughs> they're all actually unlisted. So make sure that your, your shuffle puts you in a position close enough to the attacker that you can hit him without getting the elbows past knees because that's one of your off-balance things. Remember the Kazushi thing we did. Ears past shoulders, shoulders past hips, elbows past knees, forward, sideways. If the elbow's out past your knee, you're out of balance. You're tipped, you're out of alignment. Off yeah. See, you're out of alignment almost before you move. Don't lead with your shoulder, lead with your hip. There you go. That keeps you straight, aligned. We always move from center. Always move from center, and that means your belt leads. Your belly button leads, leads the movement. Whether it's a strike, punch, kick, block, doesn't matter what it is. If you're not moving with your center, you're going to be out of balance probably. So, I don't know. <coughs> which means that we work at a distance. Most people don't like to get in. Right. You can walk in, get in somebody's face, and don't bother you to be there because you're used to working right there in their face. A lot of people are really concerned when you get that close to them because they just don't know how to do it. Especially if they study just Taekwondo or something. Right, because a lot of people like the distance. They, they like, like that the distance. Yeah, yeah, they think that gives them power. And all it, it gives them is an opportunity to be out of balance. Yeah. So. Hi. So, I guess it's just me and Phil He said he has to get ready for work. And yeah. I've heard out of time. So I don't have to be back until they get back. Gotcha. So, you have I have quite a while now. <laughs> all right. So, we got... We have time for us. As long as we can do whatever. Cool. You have some techniques you guys want to go through for jujitsu? Yeah, um, I'd like to personally. Um, if we can go through our throws, um, I have more than he does. I have, I think, four, three. Um, You're going for what? Yeah, he's going for blue. Hogo, Shuki, Ghost, uh, Kubinagi, and Kubinage and Ipon Senage. Ipon Senage. Yeah. Four. That's right. <laughs> I'm, over, I'm a little out of it today, as you can probably tell. I'm a little sick. Just the first day of getting over it now. Yeah. All right, so. Yeah. Well, go ahead and do your four basic throws. You know, we'll talk about them and go on from there. Matt can go through his, his stuff you want to do yours first. What? You want to go through yours first? Um, we'll just go back and forth. Um, I'm going to grab my book. Whichever? Okay. Um, I good. don't remember all of them. Right off the bat, I you're going to be working on knife stuff. Is that what you're going to keep working on? Um, second yeah. Second cue, is it? That's where I'm at, right? Yeah, I'm going to second cue. Yeah. Okay. So here's a. Uh, yeah, I'm on there. It was nice seeing you again. Thanks for the phone, man. Okay. Oh, no problem. Yeah. Hope you had fun today. I know I did. Yeah, man. We need to get, Thanks, sir. We need to do it more often. <laughs> So could come down more. <laughs> no, I'm trying to. 
<laughs> After I have my surgery, then I'll be able to hopefully get free. I've, I've, I've made this device, I don't know if you've seen it, the Shiatsu Pal, I call it, is that big bar or rod that I had bent that forms an S and you throw it over your shoulder and work on trigger points. I remember that. You, cool. Yeah, I, I was going to bring one today, but don't you had one, so I thought maybe you might have here, I didn't know. But I've got a, a, a guy that's going to market those things for me, and he's he's thinking he can sell a whole lot of them, and that's what he does for a living. So. Oh, you were telling us about this last time. Yeah, so we're at that point now where my next meeting with him is to decide when do we start doing it. Because he's already field tested, market testing, he's done all those things, prototypes are all finished, and Wait, we know which one we'll settle on. See. Thanks, Alvin. No problem. You take care. See you next time. Later. Hopefully it won't be too long. Yeah. And so once that gets going, then I'll be in a much better position financially, and I'll be able to jump in the car and say, I'm going to go play, and I'll be gone, and I'll be here when you never expect me. So. All right. You're doing... Well, go ahead and just go back and forth if you want, whoever's doing what, and uh, we'll go from there and see see what, uh, what needs to be fine. All right. All right. Um, address for me? I'm starting to get it now where I'm spinning around more. What I was doing before was I was stopping right where I felt comfortable at mm -hmm. instead of going the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then that was also keeping me from having that open stance. You yeah. have to finish the circle. Yes, I kept stopping yeah, at least maybe three-fourths of the way, I think. Yeah. One reason why I like starting with the elbow is um, like you have to put in. Because you have to pull them on here. Yeah. do this. All right, there you go. Doing this with your arm, you like you fit in with, like really well. So you just have to kind of get that idea with all the all the hip ropes. You start with that, and then you just kind of keep that in in, in your uh, your memory. You go up here, you fit. And okay, you fit. You fit every time. You have to do it in deep. On left side. That's and then we'll switch to one left. All right, so left side. This. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay. Make sure you get in the in the Try again. This time, throw him without looking at the floor. Okay, I'm in the air. <clears throat> yeah, keep your head up. You're not what we're trying to do is keep you from getting your ears past your shoulders. <clears throat> You don't have to look at You know he's been at the floor. He's right there. Yeah. So just make sure I keep looking at him, as you said, to not off-balance myself. Right. I think that's been a lot of my problem so far also. Because I can tell because I'm always stepping afterwards, which yeah. is causing... Well, that's what happens. When you're when you're looking there, you start leaning. Next thing you know, you're out of balance. you got to take a step to catch yourself. Mm -hmm. And especially if the person's a lot heavier than, than Mac, you get somebody that's a bigger guy, and you got to step to keep yourself from going out of balance. And it's because you're looking down at the floor that causes you out of balance. You don't spin far enough. You don't, you know, you don't get set in the right place. Then you're looking down, and the whole thing throws you out of balance. And you wouldn't have to do that if you just kept your head up. Okay. Oh, 
tipping forward instead of throwing your hip out sideways. All right. When you're standing up, just tip your hip sideways a little bit. It feels like you're going to be out of balance, but you're not. Because you're centered on your hip still. Even though they're wrapping around your hip. Looking down again. I'll end it this way. Yeah. <clears throat> if you land the other way, it's because he leaned forward. So I can wreck it, James. Okay. Cool. Still, we're still uh, one line. Pardon? And it's just one line. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Start through your shot. I'll do this one slow first. All right. <laughs> Honey is when you've got your leg against the front of their leg and you lift them up. No, um, I was trying to do. Uchimata. Uchimata, okay. And that's where you come up between the legs. Yeah. Same move as Harai, except it's between the legs. Right. And you actually lift them from this part of their leg, from the inside of their leg. Right. Which, okay. Okay. Okay, you want to get turned all the way around. You turn all the way around? Yep, you're almost standing beside him. Okay. Go out here? Move your left foot that way. Now when you swing your leg up, you're going to catch him right at the inside thigh. Okay, so here? Like that? Yep. And, and it's all one that. big, just, just jump up, spin, drop, and then you get the, the sweep in there. Okay. I think you've got this knee actually though. Yeah. Yeah, you're a little bit low, but that's again practice. It worked though. Should I um, um, go in? Reap high first? You start from there and just go right on back and take him right up over. Oh, yeah. Right in the nuts. Almost. Okay. Almost. <laughs> don't hurt his grandkids. <laughs> I don't even have kids yet. <laughs> don't hurt the whole thing. Which is why it's a fast technique because it's really a, almost a jump when you're when you're stepping and you jump up in the air and then kick. It's so almost one big move. Should I be doing a uh, replacement step? Than a Variations. Step? Yeah. Okay. There's there's stepping in like DDR or uh, Ogosh or just come right up in the air almost like a third level Jishin, dropping down at the same time your foot hits the floor that one kicks back. Gotcha. Yeah, like that. Yep. Oh, okay. Alright, so just set up then? Yeah. Oh, thank you. There I go. Yep. Oh, when you get a hold of them, bring them in. They're going to be in tight. Do what? They'll be in tight, like old Gosh, except right. you're doing. Is that why he's going off balance? Because I'm not close enough to him, so it's all. You're not holding him up. Gotcha. You're not controlling him. Gotcha. I'm letting him know. Keep the leg up enough so that when he gets over, he'll clear your leg and fall off of it. Okay. If you put your leg down too soon, then he gets trapped in there and it takes you both out of balance. Okay. Have you met Soga Mike? Schultz? Schultz, yeah. Big kid, huh? Yeah, he's a big guy. Surprising when I did that technique on him and he came up in the air and his feet went higher than he'd ever been thrown before. 
Hi, I'm quite surprised with like, that. Okay. Yeah. He uh, he wasn't expecting that. He loved it though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was wearing it immediately. Show me on him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was uh, he's a big kid. I mean, you know. But when you do the correct move, it'll work and doesn't matter if they're that big or not. All right. Is there, do I need to uh, balance him around him more so his leg doesn't get caught? Because <clears throat> his leg keeps getting caught. As you reach in with your right hand to wrap around there, um, that's where you should be uh, accomplishing the off-balancing and stuff. <clears throat> You're controlling his belt, which is his center, and by reaching around, and then when you hit the floor with one foot and the other foot comes flying up in the air with kick, you're wrapped around him, all it can do is pick him up and throw him. Now he should be tight. As soon as you're there, he should be tight in, and you got whatever technique you want. Right here? Yep. And your right foot pops up, and boom. Comes around me. So See how far off balance he is when you when you get in there that close? Yeah. When you're wrapped it. around, he's already falling. All you got to do is pick his leg up and give him somewhere to fall. Okay. <clears throat> He's he's turning and coming over on one leg, but he's not leaving the ground. Okay. Pick him up. Pick him up more. Pick him up. Get him off the ground. Just set up now. Yeah, this one. Should I give him maybe a high center first? Would that help it? Find out. Is this actual throw? Yep. Okay. <laughs> what does it feel like to you, Phil? <sighs> I mean, not, yeah, Besides yeah, the yeah. white light flashing in your eyes and all that. <laughs> but what is it? I'm Do you sure feel that he's doing something that's not quite right? I'm not sure if it's the reading or not. I just don't think it's enough of the leg into this moment. Because I feel... I, you know, flying around, but are both legs supposed to be on the air in that one, or just the you one? You should have both feet coming up. Yeah, because really, when you're doing it, only this one's coming up. And then I just kind of swing around to try to catch myself. That's the only reason why this leg's going up in the air. Okay. So, might be tiny. Man. So, I'm going to do this one. See, he's on this leg. He never leaves that leg. You, you pick the other one up, but he just kind of big swerve. Flying over his leg, he's not coming off the ground. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I think. <clears throat> yeah. So, so when I kick up that that leg, that's off. it's got to really get up there. It's okay. one of the places where you really got to kick high. Okay. Stop keeping me growing, please. Okay. <laughs> yeah. A little bit better. Uh, well, he's still on the ground, so okay. you're not picking him up yet. You want to try the other uh, arm? Sure. Oh, side, so it's so Let's do a so first. Okay. So this punch in. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, I'm gonna punch you. Yeah, this one. Uh. Right. I just need to get lower. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's popping me a little bit more. Yeah, it might help to get a little lower. Yeah. Right. All right. I feel it. It's starting to pop up more now. Yeah. I think that's you just need to work on getting lower with your technique and and uh, just practice getting lower. Remember, your belt's got to get below his, and uh, that that's how you take his center. If you're not, if your if your center's below his, then you'll get control of his center. If it isn't, then you won't. This is your book, I believe. Pardon? I believe that is your book. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Nimmo wanted me to finish it uh, before you came up so you could take it back, I think. 
Did you read it? Yes. What's it say? It says a bunch of things. It goes through how living the martial way, how a true warrior should really live. It goes through well, not really techniques and everything, but what you should really be doing when you're doing a good nutritious balance, uh, food wise, keeping training. It goes through key up or the voice throw, mm -hmm. how you should really be doing it. When the yin and yang are coming up, how uh, every moment has a high point and a low point, to be able to figure out what where it is on and everything, when the high point is and when the low point of each technique is, so I can take advantage of it. Cool. I'll have to, it's been a whole lot, of, probably 30 years since I looked at it. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's one of those things I probably gave him back in the 90s. Good book. Thank you. I, I never know where my books end up. I've given away so many of them over the years. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> See, you had your whole body turning and you didn't take advantage of it. Yeah. You were there, he was at an angle, which means you really had to make almost of a, 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 I don't want to say a 180, but you're going farther than that, you know, a 240 or whatever, just to get in position to be in front of him. And if, if you could have done all of that and, and had your sweep involved in it, or your, your kick rather, you would have. But it's just timing, that's all. Yeah. Your pieces are correct individually, you just have to coordinate them so they come together a little easier. Yeah. So just go ahead and try to go for that. <coughs> How do we yes. move and maintain center? And I'm out here because I can walk on this surface easier. Um, just like in DDR, when we want to move, we move from here. I don't move here. I move here. This is what I'm moving. This is the center of my movement, here. So if I'm going to continue to move from center, I want to keep, keep this leading or stepping. Whether I go sideways. Whatever I do, it's always with this leading, which means my knees have to be bent. So I come here, we have our basic movements with our hands, block, turn. I'm not here, because that makes you top heavy. I'm low. I stand here, Joe, cool. If I'm going to step in, I step in and I drop center and move in. If I'm going to step back, I'll step back and drop center. If I turn, hands always lead when you turn. Block. This is the working hand. There's a punch coming in. I block, strike. Don't do that. <clears throat> Not you, me. Yeah. <laughs> Talking to myself. Oh. When I'm blocking, and I'm going to turn my body. I'm going to block. Here's the working hand. In Jukido, there's a leading hand that's doing the work. Um, cross step, this hand is ready to block, it blocks, and now it's done working. This is the next hand I'm going to use when I turn my body. Block, strike, take their head off, take the throw. If I'm stepping in, <coughs> strike, this hand just did some work. This hand block, block, strike, throw. So whichever hand is working, Coordinate that with the movement that you're making that allows it to happen. And it's always a turn. Except when you're kicking. So that's the front house. So you just practice moving with your hips real low. And if you want to practice, you get a bow, put it here, watch yourself in the mirror, and if the bow is doing this, you know you're not balanced. The bow shouldn't do this either. It should stay level. Right. With the bow. Put it under your arms. Whatever. Keep the bow level. And uh, just put it here. And then when you move, watch it in there and see you don't want this and you don't want this. <clears throat> so practice turning, spinning, walking around, doing stances with the bow there. Yep, and get to where you can see in the mirror. 
and practice moving around. If you can keep that ball level, that means you're moving really good. And then do it on purpose, do it wrong. Tip your head, shoulders, shoulder, just make your mistake, shoulders, past hips, elbows, all those things. Do the balance wrong and see what happens to that ball. Here's past shoulders and that ball goes crazy. See what happens? Just that simple mistake of tipping your head forward or backward or sideways. It's going to throw your whole body out of alignment. Simple way to practice. <clears throat> Move from your hips. Always from your hips. Like there's a string in your belt that's pulling you forward or sideways or backward. It leads all the time. Just bend your knees and walk forward and see. See how well you maintain that. It's really kind of fun. I did that for lots of years. In fact, that's one of the things that allowed me to get my balance back after the accident. Um, there's that. And if you watch your hands when you're turning, like I do in Chiquito when we're doing Budafuri, Shomenuchi, Seyo those three basic exercises, if I watch my hands, most of the time I'm not out of balance. If I don't watch my hands and focus on them, I'm a dizzy blonde. I can't stand up hardly. You're bouncing. I'm bouncing? Yep. Oh. And why are you bouncing? Ears, past shoulders. Ears, past shoulders, you bounce. Keep your head up. Keep your knees bent. Move from the hips. Let your belt be the center. You can actually have somebody tie a string to your belt and pull you forward, and then you move and see if you can move without bouncing up and down. So no weevil wobble, no bounce up and down, and uh, keep your eyes up. You don't have to look at the floor. You already know where it's at. It's under your feet. <laughs> that's worth five minutes a day right there, just practicing that. Because when you get that perfected, believe me, you can start moving correctly every time. You're going to have such good technique. You're going to be way ahead of anyone else who doesn't practice. Just the same for um, Akito, too. When we do the movements, because he wants us, our hips to stay centered. Okay, so you can try that. And you can see how if you can don't have a bow, go find a nice stick like that and shave the bark off and clear coat it, and you got one. That was a bamboo stick. Very good. <laughs> I've tried Anything works, you know. We used mop handles for the first two or three years, and one day we finally decided to do something else. Something it worked. Top correct movement. Yep. See, when you violate the principles of balance, it messes up your movement and everything. Right. And when you get comfortable with this, then you feel it every time you mess up. It's like, oh, God, what did I do that for? You know? You feel it when you turn wrong, you feel it when you're not standing right. And you see it in other others when they're doing it wrong. It's like, oh, you're tipping. That's when you teach them. Because you eventually you're going to be instructors, and, and this is going to be the easiest way to teach people how to move and stay on center. Keep the balance. And, and dancing and, and some of the other things that the ladies learn, mm -hmm. they put a book on their head. And they got to be able to walk around the room and turn and do all have those things with a book on their head and not have it fall off. <clears throat> but this is nicer because it's got a real big picture here that, that you can see. <coughs> when we do the bojitsu, and I know you've seen the video for that, <coughs> you're using the stick and you're doing all the throws with that bow. And, and if you don't get it right, you don't get it. Yeah. So that also teaches you how to move on center. Cool. What else have you got there, Mac, that you're supposed to be doing? Um, um, uh, no, 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 I 
Yeah, I just learned Juji in uh, Hapkido. Actually, yeah. <clears throat> I like Juji. A lot of people don't like Juji Nagi, but I like it. It's cool. Yeah. I just, I don't know, it's the look on their face. <laughs> this is such a stressful girl. All this kind of thing. Alright. That was honey? Yeah. Okay. Slow, but it was okay. I mean, you did it right. Okay. That's, that's the fun thing. When you get it right, it don't matter if you're fast or slow. It just happens. Right. I have a question, though. Let's put... Do, do I catch them here, or do I catch them up here? Catch them Side here. of your leg in front of their... It's the side of your, it's, it's this whole part of your leg that's up against them. And it's like a teapot. You're there and you just tip sideways and bring them up over. So, do I want so that to means you need to be in front of them a little more and you turn sideways to them. Yeah. Here. Not quite that high. Right about there and you poke them so tight against you that when you turn and tip to your side a little bit and rotate your body, then they're gone. Okay. All right. Am I going that way or that way? In fact, just for fun of practice, um, when you step in and go to do this throw, don't use this hand. Okay. Just just step here, and your leg is right there. And if you've got your proper position, and your leg is here, and you tip, yeah, it makes them come over. Okay. And you just grab the OB or wrap around, whichever. Okay. That way, you're not tempted to do this. You don't need this part to do that throw. Okay. They're just right here, and you're, you're literally sideways like Hooky Coach, except you've got them latched in tight, and when you do this, and it's just tipping that raises your leg, okay. they come right over this thing. Over. Okay. Yep, so close. So close. Just finish your circle. You know, if you had to finish turning and then looked over your left shoulder with that, they'd have come right up over. Yeah. Now do it. Do it with enough turn. You didn't finish your turn. That's why he landed sideways instead of out feet. Okay. But you had everything else. Okay. What? Some more turn. Right. <laughs> You're right, right on the edge of it. A few more times you'll have that. It's just really a matter. This is where we start testing your ability to spin your body all the way around and follow through. Tai Toshi is another one because you have to turn all the way. In Tai Toshi, you end up looking over your left shoulder when you're done. And if you don't, if you look at the floor, then they don't come over all the way and they land this way. This is the same thing here. If you don't get your body turned all the way, um, and that's what this throw is really about. It's about you turning completely, doing the whole turn. Right. And if you cut it short, they land wrong. If you don't cut it short, it's real easy and they're gone and they don't know how or what. You don't feel it either because there's no strength in it. And you turn your head to look that way. There you go. So when you finish turning your head, that picks them right up. Okay. Okay, don't think about it, just do it. Alright. Oi! That was. I don't think I was in close enough. <laughs> okay. popping up and then instead of following it all the way around with your head, it's like if you were turning your hands, you turn them all the way to there. And you're not doing that. You're turning to here and looking down. Okay. That's why he's still landing the way he is. Okay. Look over my left shoulder. Like you said, right? Really? Yep. When you finish your turn, you should be looking that way. And he'll be out that way. All right. Control, control a, a little bit better. 
board that need to control it a little bit better? Or? Well, it, timing is the all that's missing. You're not kind of getting all the pieces exactly where they should be at the right time, but the only way you can fix that is just keep doing it and fine-tune each part that you, you know, you begin to feel, oops, forgot that, didn't do this, whatever, and you get it right. One more time on this side. Then. All right. <laughs> You're right on the edge of it, you know? Yeah. It's just so close. Same way, only use the one hand. Just spin and do all go the same way with one hand. Yes, sir. <sighs> Don't do the punch or anything. Just just step in and spin in and do all go. Don't do any strikes or nothing. Just just do the technique. I'm wanting to lift that leg. The only difference between the old gauche and, and the honey gauche is the leg. I'm sorry, can you uh, stop this fight and fight on it with your right hand? You can use only your right hand, yeah. Only your right hand. left hand, I'm in trouble. <laughs> what is it, sports now? <laughs> sports now. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Um, should we switch to his uh, Uki Ghost? Sure. And he has another thumb on the wall. Right, that's the one I. It's the same as Ogos, so just kind of. Yep, back. between the shoulder blades. Through better than that one is, and the hand that you follow through with on that is the one that's around the waist or up between the shoulder blades, around the neck, whatever. 
That's the one that has to continue all the way around and finish the circle. Because you can turn your body, but if your hands, that's like if your hands back here and you're trying to do a punch, it's like, oh yeah, I gotta make it come out here. So make sure that you follow through with your hands, whatever technique you're doing, you know. And that it makes your whole body turn properly then. That's the important thing. Alright. Which hand were you saying he wasn't in the uh turn right here? Or the, or the back hand. The back hand, because that's the one that's completing the throw. Okay. All right. Okay. Whew. That was not even throw, but I'm not lining it up properly. All right. All right. Are you content with that one? Yep. Gooby? Gooby. Text me one from this side. So it'll be that one? Um, you're gonna do both that. Like, uh, and keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kurt was having this go right here and around, and then for us, pointed out. We could just go <laughs> out. And then, yeah. <clears throat> I, I like to kind of get a knife edge in there or a thumb ridge in there as I go past the neck just to. Stun him for a second and then wrap around for all. Throws good. A couple of ways that you can do that besides what you've already done. Um, when you're stepping in to do it, like I said, I like to come in here and catch him, yeah. or, or this way and catch him with this right on the on the muscle here. Um, another thing you can do is really when you come in, it's just immediate like a Takubi Shindo thing that turns their head. And, and you can even catch them here where you're, you catch them on the ear and you turn their head. We want to create off balancing. I've been naughty and even done it this way. Include a choke in there or something. That depends on how aggressive they're going to be. You know, if they're getting in my face and I feel like they're really intent to hurt me, I'm going for a throat. You know, and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to crank and turn. I'm going to cause pressure and I'm going to stop all the different things, blood, breathing, all that all at one time. Sure, just breathe it out. But that's what I'm going to do because they're being aggressive enough for me to want to do that. You know, I might just come in and catch them with a, with this or an elbow, you know, and then come back here and come in with another one and hit them two or three times, and then say, okay, now I can throw them, <laughs> loosen them up, you know, because that's what the situation warrants. So, your feet were fine. To throw, Buki goes. You want to come up here. Yep, travel up the spine. But look at my hand from yours. Yeah. You're doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this. So you, uh, I'm coming up here. All right. And you're coming around here. That's the difference between Uki Gosh and Ogosh. Ogosh comes around. Kubinagi goes around horizontally. Uki Gosh comes up. Follow the spine. Come right up in the air. See how that tips him? Mm -hmm. Forward and kite nagi is here as well. If, if you, you do kite nagi, sure. Yeah, he just learned it last night. For hot and so they both come up. Kite nagi is follow the spine if you draw the line out here. Uki gosh is, is follow the spine up here. But the effect is it takes their center up there and then they follow you right over your hip because that's all they can do. That's where they're falling. So, okay. So, should I try a uh, high tongue first? That's, he wants me to go, go travel up with that. If I come around with that. For this would be nice. This one. For the, um, what I'm doing now is Uki, Gosh, Upinage. 
Oh, this is Kabuki Ghosh. Kabuki Yeah. Do I want to come around like this? Kabuki Ghosh comes up from the belt. Kabuki Ghosh. Kabuki Ghosh. All right. So I'm still doing Kabuki Ghosh. Yeah. If you're doing neck throw, then you're gonna catch with a thumb ridge and come across and rip the throat, or rip the muscle here, sternocleidomastoid, whatever. Rip that with this this shot right here, a thumb ridge, and then push around and then take them off in the throw. Um, for a neck throw. That's just a danger. That's a variation that you use if it really has to be that aggressive. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead to choke technique, technically. Um, you could do a, a knife edge if you want and just catch them in the throat a little bit right here <coughs> uh, and then wrap around to Kubi Shindo or whatever. Uki Ghost, you come in like you're doing a hip throw only, you come straight up between the shoulder blades, follow the spine. Mm -hmm. okay. Which one do you, do, do you want to see? Do you want to see Uki or do you want to see Kubi? Uki or Kubi? Uki. Uki. So that's the second one that comes up the spine. Up between the shoulder blades, yep. Follow the spine. He went over easier that time. Yeah, I thought he did. came right up over. Yeah, and that's because you take his energy. When you lead the mind, when you lead the brain, they follow. Well, if you lead it around horizontally, they'll come around horizontally and and if you lead it vertically, then they'll come up vertically. And they'll just kind of shoot right up over your body. It's like, and that's kind of where you want to be with your hunting horse, too. Okay. Up between the shoulder blades, now that I think about it. Up between the shoulder blades, and, and you lift, lift his lower body with your knee, with your leg against him. Honey ghost, there you go. Hey, there we go. OK. Try it that way when you practice two times, but yeah. So Kubi Nagi, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Uki Ghosh, between the shoulder blades. All right. Oh, no. Got to get your belt below his, remember. Yes, sir. Step in low. <laughs> nice old Ghosh. <laughs> I thought it worked better you when I got better, though. don't on Uki Ghosh, you just leave their energy. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. And then Kai Nagi, just you come up for over the top of the shoulder blade instead of on the spine. It's the same line of movement, but it's not near the spine. This one's a, a round for Kubinage. Kubinage is neck roll. Yes. Are you doing Kubinage now? I don't know. Are you? <laughs> All right. Cool. When you're doing kubinagi, you don't do this and then reach and grab the shoulder. Just leave your hand around the neck and come all the way here if you have to. Yeah. That's what completes the circle on that one. Try that honey ghost coming up through the shoulder blades.
timing was off a little bit. Uh, otherwise, you could do it. When you see the video, you'll say, okay, now I know. You guys are getting where you recognize. Okay. Um, you want him to do another throw or want me to do another? Um, whoever wants to, it doesn't matter. I just want to get through what you're supposed to have. Yeah, let's hit your keeping eye gate again. Keeping eye gate again. Oh, okay. Okay. When you look down at, are you looking at the person? I'm trying to stay uh, with eye contact with Matt. Okay. So I'm guessing that's my problem is that I keep going, following through with looking for him and then I'm looking down at him. Which is, I guess, at the end throwing me off balance. Yeah. Oh, this is throwing me off balance. Um, I had an instructor years ago who would say that if you have to look at the person after you throw them, you have an ego problem. I'm not saying you do, but that's what he was saying. Because you want to see the look on their face after you devastate them. And that's just, ah, I'm big and powerful kind of thing. And he didn't like that with people. Right. He was only five foot tall. And, uh, uh, and yeah. he, he did not want you, not he didn't want the student to get the idea they were big and strong just because they slammed the guy and then they're staring him in the face. I guess you I'm know. just trying to keep eye and So to, to keep posture proper, he almost do what Matt did, push your head back up. He didn't want you to, because some people develop that bad idea and they start looking at the guy thinking, yeah, I like the look in his face. I just got you, ha ha, you know. Just to see the expray, uh, the surprise look on their face when you slam them into the ground. You know. <coughs> and it's nice to know you can do that, but if you're not letting your head get in the way, your ego get in the way, then you don't care what the guy looks like after he gets slammed, you already know what happened. He's laying there thinking, oh, what did happen? <laughs> so, so you take that out of the equation so you don't get involved in the emotion because when you allow emotion to become part of the equation, part of your activity, then all of a sudden you're drawn into a situation. Everybody knows when they walk into a room to say you're going to a bunch of friends' house, it's Friday night, you're going to kick back, relax with a bunch of friends. If there's somebody there with a bad attitude, you're going to pick up on it immediately and know to avoid that idiot because he's just waiting to get drunk enough to do something stupid, get in somebody's face. And if you know that, you can avoid it. You can not be part of it. You can't be drawn into it. But if you're looking at the end of each technique for the expression on their face, for how you defeated them, or whatever, then that's giving, getting you into a bad situation because you're now looking for something. Even subconsciously, you don't realize that, I got that fucker, you know. And you may not say it out loud, you may not even realize you're doing it, but if you don't allow, you to, allow yourself to build the habit of having to look them in the eye after you just popped them on, you know, then you won't get drawn into whatever emotion they're going to put out there. Fear, anger, some people, you pop them in the face and they just stand there and they're getting ready to kill you now. It's like, shit, I just gave you everything I got and I'm dead. You know, that happens too, but if you're not looking at them, if you're not staring them in the face, looking for a particular sign, you know, then you're not going to get drawn into whatever there might be with the emotion of the situation. You can keep yourself calm and not be part of it, other than defending yourself, you know, or protecting somebody else, if you will. And so this little guy that was the instructor uh, wouldn't look him in the eye when you're sizing them up, if you will, to set up for the technique, but you don't look at them after the technique is over. You don't give them the privilege of staring you down or giving you the evil eye, I'm going to get you, you know, whatever it is they're saying, you know. You just ignore them, they're not there, they're not significant. And so that does two things. It keeps you from being drawn into it, and it keeps them from being able to make an expression that might just get them in deeper. You know, because some people don't like it when you when you show them up. <coughs> you know, they just took their best swing and you dropped them like a hot potato, and 
So you save them humiliation because they don't have to respond to you. You're not responding to them, and they can shut their mouth and walk away. Or they can get stupid and jump up and start it over. But most of the time, they're not going to want to do that. They're going to just, if you don't give them an opportunity to respond again, if I keep staring you in the face every time I do something, you're going to keep wanting to react to it. So I don't give you something to react to. I just drop you on the floor and let you lay there and hurt. If you move, okay, I'll be aware of it. I don't have to look at you to know that. You pick up on the vibration of what's in the room. So you learn to avoid those people or you learn to not give them a second opportunity. So it becomes a variety of different emotional things that, that can keep you involved in a situation that didn't have to escalate. If any of that made sense, let me know. <laughs> All of it made sense. But, uh, yeah. Go okay. ahead. Whatever. What else have you got to show? You, you're done. He only has you, one more. I have go ahead and do the, the next one and the last one. He does this one pretty well. Though. This is the one that comes from the side. Um, <clears throat> he normally has to do this. Mm -hmm. So pretty much. Cool. Yeah, get well. Cool. Yeah. He does that one really well. You could use a knife edge. You use a back fist. A high rate can, you could do a variety of techniques. Uh, yeah, you could do it. It's all in how they've turned after they strike you. Okay. When they leave open, it's just like wham, you know, take out a floating rib and smile. <laughs> So, as you're doing one arm shoulder throw, note that this hand is up here. Again, it's following the same line as the spine, only you're not touching the back, you're coming over the shoulder. Just like with Kite Nagi and Uki Gosh. Then you get farther down the road and you start doing techniques where you're on two legs, spinning, turning, like Tai Tosh and whatever, and then you get to where you're on one leg, you're doing honey, uh, Harai Gosh and so forth, and you get to where you're doing techniques on one leg, and then you farther along get to the point where you're doing technique where you're in the air spinning and dropping, and as soon as you hit the floor, they're being thrown. And so see how it progresses from standing and turning on two feet to standing and turning to one foot, and then eventually where you're just spinning, and by the time you hit the floor, they're gone. So it progresses that way. Then you have techniques where you wrap around this way. You have techniques where you come up between the shoulder blades. Then you have techniques where you bring the energy up on the side of their body. Then you got sweeping and reaping and all that. Each one takes you a little farther along in your ability to move correctly and stay on center and execute throws and stuff. And so it's kind of neat. A lot of people teach basic throws in judo and all that kind of stuff, but they never teach it the way I just said it. They don't realize the transition from one leg or two legs to one leg to reaping to sweeping the energy flowing between this part and that part and everything else. They don't put all that together. You know what they end up with is a bunch of slop because all they're doing is rah, grab and tug of war, push and pull, and, and they never execute technique effectively because 
they know how to do it. <coughs> they think it's the strength that they have, and that's what you see in the judo tournaments anymore. It's all strength. It's push pull tug of war, which is crap. It's not judo. So it's like the opposite. Of go ahead, yeah, have fun. Just just play and do whatever it is you're supposed to do, and then. Yeah, exactly. That's that's it. They grab a hold and they just run around their back and forth. Instead, what you're supposed to do is when I do this, you're supposed to turn in. That's motion. That's motion. Yeah, that's what um, I'm on those things. Mm -hmm. uh, so just using that little oh, gap of opening. Yeah. And use it against yeah. them. Yeah, because I'm trying to oh, to uh, to uh, overpower you. Hold his uh, look. Sleeve right there, yeah. You hold there, and then he holds there, and you can do the monkey. And it becomes a tug of war. Yeah. Like wrestling. Mm -hmm. The strongest one wins. Right. So um, maybe I'll try to take advantage, and then you'll grab my, 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 my arm away. So, 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 I, so I can't, so I can't get in there. So, I it. so then maybe you'll, so, so, so you'll spin around. Take more balance than that. If you're using strength, you're doing whatever it is you're doing, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, you're supposed to be using strength. either the moment or the person should, against them. You should be able to do whatever it is because your movement's correct. Or yeah. Yeah, but the, if you watch a judo thing on, on YouTube and catch one of those videos from some of the tournaments, and you'll see those guys are all bent over, they're so far out of balance, it's like the only way one person can control the other is <laughs> one of them strong enough to actually do it. There's no technique involved, it's just strength. And that's what judo has turned into, which is so wrong. So. You, see what, you see when I did that, I had to you had power to, you, yep. twist myself, and I was all balanced. Yeah. And that's what they do? Yep. It's so sloppy. Watch it, you're going to think, oh my god. I'm not, I'm not there. You're not <laughs> in their class. class. <laughs> okay. Alright, alright, let's go back to your stuff. Yeah. I have uh, uh, Judy. tissue real quick, please. Uh, I hate me. Oh, yeah, Juju. That's the next one. Now you're doing Juji from grabs and whatever uh, strikes. Yeah, we've done uh, in jabs and then just like a push. Okay. Or, well, no, not jabs, but grabs. And grabs, yeah. Pushes. Propel grabs, two hand grabs. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. chokes. Yeah, we haven't. Yeah, we do from choke. Me? I haven't worked on it very much for jiu -jitsu. I've worked on it for um, Aikido. Yeah. Um, but jiu -jitsu, not too much. So, so I know how to do the throw. Um, but, yeah. All right, what do I got to do? You need to go ahead and pull it. Grab here. Is this yeah. one again? Yeah? Hmm? Is the one where you go like that? Oh no. Um, it's gonna be like. Here. And then I'm trying to think for Dota on really how to do it. <coughs> so it is that one. Yeah, where I like cross your uh, your elbows over. Yep. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that one. <gasps> oh, I like this one. I like that one. Yeah. It's not too hard on me, but it still has You're supposed you to hop and do like a rotary drop. I know. You haven't learned them yet. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Any suggestions? Corrections? You want to get under like you're doing a shoulder throw. More under his armpit. Um, let's see if I can talk my brain through it. Okay. I want to be here. Okay. And then up over. All over. Yeah, okay. See, he's grabbed, and all I do is here. Tax him and take him over. Yeah. Do you like it? I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. 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 I'm s
But that's what you want to get next. Okay. Um, let me choke. Um, let's see. I want to come here, here, and across. I'll do that. Okay. okay. Um, that's what I want. I mean, it's okay to have a choke. I don't care. Well, do the one just from from a graph. Get an X and then take them over. There you go. Oh, I've done that one before too. That's the, that's what we're missing. Um, yeah. <coughs> just <to> like it. <laughs> I'm just gonna take them out more. That's what I was thinking, and I couldn't get my finger to it. Um, <coughs> yeah, good. This one I'm, I'm thinking is the well, cause, cause, cause Kurt ha has me do that, mm -hmm. I just did, and Juji, but like a different way. Like he has me. We had it also from a two hands on one grab, I think. Mm -hmm. Right here. I can't turn that way, but yeah. Okay. I'm thinking. Oh, when I drive home, I'll be thinking of ten different ways to do it, and I'll think, gee, why couldn't I think of that when I was there? All right. So here's how it is, isn't it? Um, I don't know how we have it now. Copy. <laughs> you changed the number of requirements, but here. Here. Marote. He calls that one Marote Nage. Marote. Um, when I when I turn it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's he says it's like a two hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the two hand. Two hand shoulder throw type thing. Right. And, then, and he says that Juji is when you cross the elbow. Yeah, shoulder. that's correct. That is. See. Thank you. We'll reconnect that one. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to get was the one where they they have to do a rotary graph over, mm -hmm. over themselves. Right. Yeah, and that's what you just did. I good. You should know what I'm thinking. Yes. Yeah. No. Model. Cool. Um, I have the Ajuji one. Like, uh, yeah. Have you done? You have you done rotary drops? No, that's what I've done. He hasn't, it. so he can't take it very well. Not yet there. Not, not yet. there yet. No, not there yet. He's he, he's not at tree falls yet. I don't think. No, no, no rotary falls either. Believe me, don't get in a hurry with any of them. Do them as you feel comfortable. First time I did one of those was after class. I went home. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna try it out in the grass. Oh, that hurt! <laughs> yeah, it's not as soft as it looks out there. Huh? <laughs> it's not. Grass isn't soft. Why did I do that? Well, uh, I got back to that. Huh? When did we use that? Because I've done that one before. Oh, yeah. I, I hadn't done it in class. I, you had me do it uh, when we were practicing one time. Remember you had oh. Sam and I do it? It's it's the next step up from uh, from just this. All right, so it's just the yeah, next one. That's where I'm at right now. Out. Tree fall is just. Um, handstand and then just slowly fall. Yeah. And it's straight down, right? It's not. Yep. Yeah, you should just come straight down. Knees bent. Yep. We'll get to it soon. Um, I'm going to try to throw on him that he can take. He could take. Uh, I'd take anything. Oh, arm pat down. An elbow drop. <laughs> um, <laughs> Punch? <laughs> is that what is it? Hygiotoshin? Is that how you say it? Hygiotoshin? Hmm. It's Hiji. Mm -hmm. Um and it's not in my brain, like what's Hiji? Is that like an arm cut down? Is that what he's got written there? Yeah, it's just an arm cut down. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, because to me that's called something else. 
um, that we don't call it PG in Jiu Jitsu. We don't call it something else. It's up there, isn't it? Uh, I'm thinking it might be. Sumio Tosh or something, I think. Arm cut down. That's what's in my brain, but that don't mean it's right. I'll see. E G or I. I'm not seeing an arm cut down. This is Friday. Yes. All right. You guys work tonight? Uh, no, today's our day off. That's why we're here. Uh -huh. Yeah. We, we, we normally work. Um, he, he goes in at four. No, six in the morning. Now. Six on set Fridays. Six in the morning. Tomorrow? Um, well, almost every day. Oh, okay. And then I come in at like ten, at 10 or 11 in the morning. Oh, okay. So, but we had the day off, so we were like, hey, let's get on my door. Yeah. Get some work out. I thought Timothy would be here, but I couldn't get him to. He didn't want to get out of bed. He was up all night. And what exactly? Whatever, I don't know. All right, so I know arm cut down, and I also know Tenshi. That was a little newer to me, but I feel like it's pretty easy. Well, Tenshi Nagi is really just straight in, straight down. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a. That's one I need to roll. It's just forward roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bill, you want to just do a forward roll out of it. There you there go. You go. <laughs> a fast one with that, but it's a forward roll. <laughs> Have you learned to roll out of falls instead of falling, just roll up? Uh, yeah, that's what I did originally, but I'm trying to. I, I do that too well, so I'm just trying to learn to just do a slap on afterward and stay okay. on the ground. Well, that's good. you got to be able to do both. Okay, so I, I feel really confident with those two. Um, I'm feeling a, a lot better with the first two that, that we did. Um, Uchimane and Hanagos. Your Uchimane and Hanagos both ended up pretty good. It, it, timing is off a little bit, but you're getting that, you know. And, and just having that little position of how the energy comes around makes a big difference on those two as well, so. Yeah. And Juju and I, that's just, that's just always easier for someone who knows how to take the fall. Yeah. Juju, yeah, you got to have somebody that's, you know, at least yeah. blue belt, green belt, and somewhere in between there where they can take that fall. It's, it's hard because you got to throw it yourself. Otherwise, it just break your arms and who cares? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, you get here and it's like, that's it, baby. You know, you've got an X mm -hmm. here and it's really rough on the elbow that's extended. And uh, <clears throat> yeah. you go or you don't, you know. I go lower on Phil. So I don't hurt it. I just come down so I can kind of relax. So that's the um, one that I'm supposed to be doing the rotary drop for. Right. Um, it's more like a sound. <coughs> Not just a whoo, but a... Just like a full out, like, like <sighs> and you have to breathe it out because I have both your hands and I might not let go. Yeah, so I have to make sure I breathe. Yep. Yeah, breathing's a good and important part of your rotary drops and tree falls and all that. And marote is really good too. That that first one I was doing too. Yeah, do two two more shoulder throw. Yeah, because I have your hand on that too. So you have to do kind of like a regular rotary drop for that, right? Mm -hmm. But no slack out. So you have to breathe out and out too. So yeah, it's about to do it. <coughs> so. um, anything else you want to see? Maybe the uh, holds? Hold downs, catch, Sammy. I saw those before. You can go ahead and do it if you want. You can uh, tell me how to get to them with the. Uh, you can do them as a follow through from a throw. Okay. Do a hip throw, neck throw, shoulder throw, whatever, and then just drop down, go right into one of the two. Right. And he went too far over. Well, what do I do when I go too far over? Just kind of choke his face back over? You can do that if you want, or you can just, uh, you know, lift up on your right hand and do a choke out. You can go ahead and try to get out. Or slap out. Uh. <laughs> You get it on the net, which makes it hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's what's, that's what's that's really good about it. <laughs> All right, and that's that one. That's the that was the shoulder hold, right? Yeah. That was the uh, 
You've got uh, scarf holes okay. and <coughs> shoulder holes. Okay. <coughs> Kaskatami, Kaskatami. Do, and do I want my hips higher up on this one? I like to keep my hips higher up. And that time, every time he tries to move or turn, you can just slide right with him. <laughs> I like it. I like it being done to me, but I like it. Yeah. Um, I, I left those in there even after all these years. I still look at it and think, what are we doing this for? You know? And the reason is because there's no conclusion. It's great if you're wrestling, but you're really not going to do that on the streets. You want to take the guy out. So that's why whenever I do it, I get a thumb ridge hit yeah. under that neck, you know, right up there, turn it up, crank it up there and knock them out. But for this one, well, that's being nice unless you really crank in and drop that shoulder right on his throat and knock the guy out. Gotcha. So yeah, good. <laughs> it's all I learned. And then, um, and that's what you want to do. You want to knock the guy out. You really don't want to get down there and get into a, a situation where you're grappling around on the ground because you don't know who else is out there with that idiot. He might be by himself. He might have two buddies waiting to come bash over there with a chair or bush you, right? Or trash can or something. Right. So, I always choke him out, if, especially in a situation where you're going against somebody. You step into that with a throw, and you're. I sometimes will deliberately do the throw so that I'm dropping, driving them right through the floor because I'm going right down with them. My shoulder or something's going to be there where I know they're going to be unconscious when they hit the ground. Because yeah. if you get your shoulder down there, then their head is back. You're going to drive them into the ground head first. And we're and I don't mind that at all when you're defending yourself, we're especially if they had a weapon. In Hapkido, we're kind of doing this. Um, it's just like that, that I hold that. that oh, that's what So if he pushes, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. So I have that. Or if uh, I pull, yeah. If he pulls, I'll go. <laughs> uh, yep. And 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 that's where where I get that lock. Yeah. And it's supposed to fly out. That's good. Oh uh, man, I feel that everywhere. <laughs> Sorry, no, no, but that's good. Oh, that's good. Yeah. All right. So, but that that's what we're working on in Hapkido. So I, so I'm getting the concept of how to do it. Sure. Except. And in the Dodon Jiu Jitsu, I don't use those applications for it. Yeah. Have you ever done the monkey throw? Um, I tried. I know Josh tried it one time too. But um, I can't remember how to do it. It's like, you can just like hold that on the car. There? Um, no. Should he throw a punch? Cross step. It doesn't matter what he does. Okay. Cross step so that you're going to the outside around and you jump up in the air, both legs around him, around the neck, and just spin him around and drop him. And when you get done, he's here. You're on your back, he's here, he's stroked out, and you got him in Do Jimmy as well. Alright, so if he doesn't land on his face, I land on my back. You might have to roll over into it, but yeah. Okay. That'd be afraid. Yeah. Okay, so Yeah, you gotta get a rotation. Uh, yep. Yeah. You wanna be spinning as you do it. Okay. Yeah, going to turn him clear around, so it's really going to be a, a spinning technique. What? No, I can't. Actually, step back a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right, go ahead. See what happens. You're going to jump and just grab hold and turn his whole body around with you, so you're going to get kind of a roll involved in it. So I get this. All right. Oh, I right, swing the other leg up. Swing it's like you're going to swing that left leg up and come around into a big circle with your left hand coming around his neck, your left leg wrapping around his body, and he's just going to roll right over. Oh, there you go. See how you rolled into that? <laughs> this one's under here, so really all I have is this. And you, there is a picture of it, I think. I saw, was it on that video that we were watching? Did, yeah, there's a video of it when uh, Doju did it to uh, somebody. So good idea. When we went out to Spokane to watch it. Yeah. So good idea. Well, we have a video of it with uh, you, So good idea, and I'm at uh, 
the uh, hospital. Okay, with, then with, you with do paper. Paper. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, that's the technique. And so you really got to get that good spin so you you turn because by the time you're done rolling, you've got it. Yeah. You're locked in. And that's something so disoriented, like what the heck? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know it was coming and I so was. Yeah. Well, it's disoriented. I mean, it totally takes away everything you've got. You know, you don't have any balance, perception, everything's gone. It's fun. <laughs> one throw I'd really like to get down, which I don't know is in, is in my friend, which I think it is at some point. It's going to be in there somewhere. Um, it's the, I don't see it. It's called, I mean, it's 20 year throw. Kokyo Nage. Kokyo Nage. Yeah, it takes about five minutes for it. Yeah. Well, you know the principles of balance and not balancing. Yeah. Kokyo Nagi is just like, oh, okay. So for Dota, you know, it comes in. I should probably set it up like this first, right? Just like a... Just do whatever you're thinking and all. Okay. <laughs> come this way. Do I lock around here first? When I do this and then come around? Um, ooh, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Or, Right here, right, yeah. Like that. Well, you're kind of right. Kind of right. Kind of right. Kind of right. I've had one <coughs> good lesson with Kurt, Kurt on that one, but it's been a while. Just step in with punch. I want to come here. Draw him in <coughs> and take him back there. Um, come all the way around. And when you come around, you want to get him down to here. Yep. And then come up, and I'm going to move this leg back. Okay. That's how we do it in Jiu-Jitsu. That's how you do it in Jiu-Jitsu. You know, variations of that it doesn't really make any difference how you get him from here to here. It's the reversal on it. So, allow him to come in and turn. You step and go around him. So you get him right up around the neck and hit him. Left hand up. My left hand up? Yeah, you're, you're going to go around him. His energy is coming at you. You're going to guide it this way. This way? Turn this way. Yep, hand all the way around. That way you pull him to you. Then take your right hand right up right up under the throat. Right up under the throat. And take that hand right up to the sky, follow the spine, right up over his head. Your other right hand. Who? What? <laughs> My other right hand? As you, as you both unravel there. Your other right hand comes up under his throat. This won't stop it, is it? Oh, it's a alarm? Yeah, it's an alarm. Um, Alright, so I'll go this way. Come around. Guide him. Okay, now. Right hand. Release whatever you're holding on to. Yep. That's and then you come right up under the throat and pivot your left foot back around. Bring him with you. There you go. Okay. Oh, fine. Ooh, it's painful when you take this. But we're in. Oh, I'm, I, I told you I'm out of it today. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's try it. Let's try this. Dynamic reversal. Mm -hmm. The punch is coming in. I don't want to get inside him. I want to be on the outside of him. Right. So I'm going to cross step. Then I'm going to turn. His energy is coming here. I've just moved the target and got out of the way. Now I'm going to trap that energy and bring it around to here, which puts him in this position. Then I'm going to let go of this, and I'm going to swing right up and turn here. Block with your right hand. Block, Block here. Okay. Can I do it? Uh, Quit doing that. The uh, cross step. On me. On me. On me. Oh, sorry. all the way around. Yeah, so I actually have his arm. Instead of Take him all the way around. Yeah. Okay. Stop there. Now, just slide this hand. Your right hand. Keep your left hand there. You know I'm losing. Take this and just come right up into his throat, then you can move that out of the way. <coughs> Drop him. Okay. 
you're here and you're going to come here, okay. right here. And as soon as you've got that, then this hand can move and you can step to there. Okay. Ah, took me on much jujitsu. That's what's wrong with it. <laughs> Too much jujitsu. Too much jujitsu. That'll ruin Aikido every time. <laughs> That's what my brother used to say. You ruined my Aikido with that damn jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. We do jujitsu, which is pure jujitsu. So that's it. You just step here, turn here, stop moving, and then come back up this way, turn. To there. Okay. I may never do that again. On occasion I get it right. But you can drop with it, which right through the floor. Way under side? Way under. Yeah. yeah. Right out through the floor. <laughs> right on the street. Yeah. Hey, you like painting? Why? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, cool. Do it a couple times if you want. Watch right. Oh, come on, dude. Come on. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Well, you just so watch. You got to turn left, then you got to turn right, or right, then left. All the way around, taking with you. Right hand comes up under the throat. Move your left leg out of the way, and there you go. A little more turning as you do that. I want to block this hand. All right, so. Complete opposite of what I've been taught now. Yeah. You still want to kind of act like it's this foot, yeah. but this foot goes in that spot. So. So. Alright, now when you do that, it's just like a reach in tight. Yeah. Except it's reach in oh, tight. Oh, okay. So that's the most important part, yeah. getting that chin. We'll get the opposite hand. That's... Yeah. 
this, uh, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a spine lock, isn't it? It can be. Yeah, there's variations. I can probably just go ahead and do a spine lock. If it turns into too much strength, that can never. In Aikido and Jukido, when we do it, mm -hmm. I'm not going to throw you, let's just go through the steps. Okay. Um, here, when we get to here, this, this hand is going to come right up and lead the mind. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to do with that, lead the mind. Or you can do it a little more aggressively like you would in Jiu-Jitsu, <laughs> tip the head, you know, all that kind of stuff. Be aggressive. Okay. Or you can come right in with a throat shot and just <laughs> take them right out, you know. And <laughs> I've seen that a few times. Okay. With students that need attitude adjustments. You, no, nope, you didn't turn your body. I didn't turn you can't body. do that. You got to turn your body and follow through, or you won't get the technique. Circles. <coughs> Maintain your center. Yeah. You okay? Ah, headache. <laughs> it's only a headache. I'll do one more. As long as you don't feel me, that's all I care. Oh, I'm dead. What Koku Nagi does is brings you to that level, level that combines everything you've learned all the way up to that time. You've got variations of throws, one, one leg, reaping, kicking, over room of Ragosh, all the ones where you're doing a kick, you're on two feet, you're on one foot, you've got one leg extended out. All the variations of how you hold on to the person. This is the first technique one of the first, where it requires simple movement. You're not picking the guy up. All you're doing is wrapping him. You're doing centripetal force, which wraps around your center. He's wrapped around you, and he's wrapped all the way to here, and you're following your hands. This is where you learn to focus and follow your hands so that you're moving from center. If I did this, I got nothing. And he's not out of balance, and he'll prove it to you because he'll stand right up on you. So try it wrong once, that would be a chance. So it makes you follow your hands. In Chiquito, we always follow our hands. When I do that, it don't make me dizzy. But if I start doing this, I get disoriented. Crazy. The people that were teaching me how to walk back in 08 after my accident couldn't figure out how I could go back and forth doing Udafuri and some of those exercises. And then when I was supposed to walk on a line, I couldn't do it. They couldn't figure it out, and I said, when you're focused on your hands, you're ignoring all that out, out there. None of that matters. But I said, when I'm trying to focus and walk a straight line, all that other stuff is distraction because I can't block it out, and, and I can't focus. I don't have um, balance. And so I actually tried it and realized, hmm, wow. So anyway, it didn't work for me. They said, oh, OK, well, he's not hurt anymore. <laughs> anyway, so it, it forces you to move correctly. It's your first chance to show that I can do a throw without actually having to grab a hold or they're just trapped inside your arms. That's all it is. He's trapped here. You come around the head, around the neck, and it bends him at the waist. And then I come right up here, catch him, and take him right up over, and I move out of the way so I can take him over backwards. If you don't move out of the way and just do this, then all you're doing is throwing yourself off balance because your ears, past shoulders, and all that's going to happen. Move correctly and they'll be gone. Okay. The Japanese say it's a 20 year throw. You know, balance and how to, how to move correctly, it's a 10 minute throw. Why do they call it 20 years? They say 20 years because they don't know how to explain to you what they're actually doing. Oh. And they, most of them, don't know what they're actually doing. So it takes 20 years? They don't have a clue. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. They don't explain anything. They just, just do it. Just do it. You know, practice, practice, practice. That's nice. What am I doing? Huh. What am I practicing? They can't okay. tell you. You're just practicing. Yeah. Maybe yeah. they just don't know. As you said, they don't know themselves. They don't. And that's why I said there's a lot of katas from, from different styles and different things. They go through the moves, kick, punch, chop, chop, and all that. And they turn all these different ways. And you've seen the karate tournaments and stuff. 
some of that stuff's two, three, four hundred years old, some even older. And the stuff they do is no good. It's garbage. Most of what they're doing teaches you how to be out of balance. And if the technique and, and, and the way you're practicing something breaks your, your ears, back, shoulders, and all the balance things that you know, then it's wrong. You shouldn't practice that exercise if it's going to teach you how to be out of balance. And, and I see a lot of that. I watch videos. People send me videos. What do you think about this? You know, blah, blah, blah. And I've learned not to say what I think about whatever it is because I usually open my big mouth and put my foot in it and then they don't like me. You know, blah, 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 blah. They, don't, they don't appreciate it when you tell them that what they're doing is, is keeping the person out of balance. You're learning how to be out of center. You're learning how to move wrong. Why would you do that exercise? What do you mean I'm moving wrong? Because you're practicing something that teaches you how to move wrong, and then when you try to do a technique, you can't get it. When you don't know why. Most people don't like destructive criticism. <laughs> they don't like anything negative towards what they're doing, even though it's not really negative. They're only trying to teach what, why it is wrong. Yeah. Crazy. That's what the, I learned in school. <laughs> um, the simple things that I've taught the last couple times I've been here about balance, ears, fast shoulders, and all that. If you know you have your basic blocks, high block, low block, inside block, outside block, that's good as long as you don't twist too far with it. If you turn your upper body, you better be turning your hips with it. Otherwise, you're out of balance. You're breaking center. <coughs> you're breaking your axis. Um, so if you're going to turn your upper body with a block, turn your whole body with that block and go into a front stance. Or turn your whole body and pivot into a kibonachi or some other type of stance where you turn. Don't just twist your upper body to do a block. Don't come across this way and turn your body and leave your feet glued to the floor because you're going to be out of balance. So blocks should cause you to maintain your balance. Everything you do should keep you in balance. And so if I'm going to block and turn my body, I'm going to turn my whole body so that my hips and feet and everything keep me centered. And when I do that, they're out of center. They're out of balance. And, and that's so every move. And when you do a strike, you know, somebody posted the other day about uh, reverse punch. Okay, that means that your left leg is falling, you punch with your right hand. That's a reverse punch. I don't know, somebody thought that up years ago, right? Opposite hand, opposite foot is a reverse punch or strike, whatever. Right. And so they're asking about the elbow. Well, is the elbow supposed to be this way, which means it's uh, pointed sideways when you do a regular straight punch, or is it supposed to be pointed downward? Well, the only way you can point it down is if you're doing a vertical fist. Yeah, and so I posted that. I got people were confused. I'm like, what? <laughs> you can't turn your elbow. How can you get your elbow to point down if you're doing... You know, they didn't define how they're doing the reverse punch. And so I said, this is the two ways I've seen it done. It's the only two ways you can do it. And have your elbow pointing sideways or downward. I mean, yeah, you know, these people don't think beyond the end of their nose, I think. Sometimes they're, they're not thinking at all, and they're asking questions, and they don't even think about, what are you asking? I mean, I'd like to see a video and say, well, show me how you could do that, do this, and have your elbow pointing to the floor. Yeah, and the way that they do it is because they twist their body wrong. They twist their upper body as they do the technique and it throws them out of center. Well, now the elbow points wrong because they're wrong. It's got nothing to do with the punch, it's about the fact that their body's out of alignment. If I had said that to them, they'd have, oh, they wouldn't have understood it, they'd have gone crazy. Yeah. They're just trying to overcomplicate things and not think of what's natural. It's natural for your... Yeah. The only two ways to do it if you want. Yeah. You know, and that was the two options they gave you elbow to the side or elbow to the floor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh my God, he's got it. It ain't rocket science. And nobody responded after I did. <laughs> That's why I don't very often respond to these people. They just ask some of the dumbest things and they don't even. When you give them the answer, it's like, huh? Oh, what? They don't so, understand what they're asking. <laughs> so.